Welcome back, CAD 37 CATIA surfacing class. Today we're going to cover continuity. So I'm going to spend today's lecture just explaining what is continuity. All right, so if you want to work in a, in a car studio, studio department for a large automotive company where they make the clay models and then convert those to surfaces for the exterior and the interior of a vehicle, you need to understand continuity. Also, if you're going to be creating aerodynamic surfaces, whether it's aerospace, working on a fuselage, or working on, uh, on vehicles, or even small drones, you are going to be uh, constantly bringing up continuity. Okay, So it's a common term that you uh, hear in surfacing, whether it's CATIA or using ALIAS. So most automotive companies will use uh, ALIAS for their surfacing. Uh, that's owned by Autodesk. And uh, other companies will use CATIA or a combination of ALIAS and CATIA surfacing to create their Class A surfaces for automotive and their B surfaces and C surfaces. All right, so continuity. When uh, we use the letter C, we're referring to wireframe, to curves. And when we use G, we're referring to surfaces. In later videos, when we do the surfacing tutorials, I'll bring up the, the G continuity, referring to surfaces. We're going to focus on wireframe, on curves. Okay, so let's focus on curves. Okay, so let's talk about some of the first levels of continuity. Okay, so C0 continuity refers to point continuity. Okay, think of a sharp corner. Think of taking a, a piece of wire metal wire and you bend it and create a sharp corner. If it's surfacing, think of a, taking a sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and putting a crease in it. That will give us point continuity. It would be G0 if it surfaces, right? So a sheet of paper is a surface. So just imagine putting a crease on that paper. So now you don't have a, a smooth transition from one surface to another. You have a sharp corner, okay? so. C0, think of sharp corners. And then we can improve on that by adding tangent continuity, like a fillet, adding a round. Then we have curvature continuity. And we have curvature continuity with equal rates. And there's even more, but we're only going to cover the first few here, the first four levels. All right, so let's first take a look at C0 continuity. What does it look like? Okay, so C0 is when you have a sharp corner, right? Or again, take, take a sheet of paper and you put a crease into it. And that would give us, for surfaces, that would be G0, continuity at that point. Now the rest of it, so if we have this beautiful conic shape or spline, here we have at least C3 continuity. As you're traveling along this curve, it's nice and smooth. So if I go back to the first slide, we have curvature continuity with equal rates, and I'll explain this in a later slide. Same thing with the green spline or conic curve, we have a nice smooth transition. Just imagine like uh, you're driving your favorite sports car, right? You're having a dream, you're driving 100 miles per hour on the highway, and you can take the curves with no problem going 100 miles per hour, right? And all the cars are getting out of your out of your way. Or you have the whole freeway to yourself as you're driving 100 miles per hour. Maybe you're on the Autobahn. And all of a sudden, you have to make a sharp right turn going 100 miles per hour, right? You're going to most likely go off and crash, right? Just like on those car chases when somebody, when the suspect tries to uh, exit off the freeway using the off ramp at going at 100 miles per hour and forgets that there's a sharp turn, right? Man, they will go off. So now your dream turned into a nightmare, right? Okay, so you cannot make this turn going 100 miles per hour. The sharp corner, which is almost at a 90 degree angle here. Okay, so this is C0, point continuity. Okay, so if I was to duplicate this in Katia, I'm going to go into the 
generative shape design workbench, the workbench that we're currently working in for the surfacing class. And I'm going to use Sketcher. Even though we haven't used Sketcher yet for surfacing and uh, wireframe, I will uh, allow you to use Sketcher for your final project. Hopefully the last two weeks you'll spend it on your final project. And we'll have a separate lecture on what I expect for the final project. All right, so we do have Sketcher and Generative Shape Design, just like in Part Design. So let me pick a plane to sketch on. And by the way, I, I do use Sketcher when I'm doing wireframe, especially if the wireframe is on, on a planar surface, right? It's faster if you do it in Sketcher. All right, so I'm going to create a spline. So here's the spline command. And let me first simulate the blue uh, spline. Uh, close enough. And let me exit by clicking on the spline icon again. There it is. Okay, let me go ahead and make this blue. And then I'll create the green one. Okay, click in space to deselect. I hit escape on the keyboard. Okay, so now let's do the green spline. And again, we're just guesstimating the shape. It's not a big deal. And let me end it by clicking on the spline icon. There it is. It's not exactly the same, but pretty close. And let's make this green. Okay, so as you can see here, as I'm changing the color that we lost curvature continuity, and now we have point continuity at that point. So let's make this green. Okay, so when you are uh, working for a good example, uh, car studio, studio department, where they have the clean models of the vehicles, right? You will, you will hear the stylists. So the stylists are the ones that make the clay models of the next uh, concept car or the model that's coming out in a few years. So they're the stylists. They shape the clay models to, uh, uh, to their sketches. They, they created prior to starting the clay models. They're called the stylists. And the ones that we created in Katia surfacing or alias so alias uh, is also surfacing software that's very common out there owned by autodesk katia is owned by dassault systems so both softwares uh are the most popular when it comes to uh surfacing and there's other softwares but for the big companies that's what they tend to go with alias and katia surfacing all right so when you're working in a department you're going to hear uh the stylists or digital stylists refer to this as accelerating or decelerating. Okay, so imagine again uh, traveling along a freeway and you have the car of your dream. So you're in this great dream, you're asleep, and you have your favorite sports car and you're going 100 miles per hour and you're traveling along the curve, right? And everybody's getting out of your way or you have the whole freeway to yourself and nobody's around to enforce the law right so you're going 100 miles per hour beautiful curvature then all of a sudden you hit a nightmare bam a sharp corner you cannot make this turn at 100 miles per hour so when you see those car chases right and the suspect is trying to get off the freeway off ramp and tries to make that sharp corner too late it's just going to skid off and go into the brushes or off the side, right? So again, curvature continuity. So when you have a beautiful curve to follow along and you need to decelerate or accelerate, right? To make the change from one curve to another. So here we don't have curvature continuity, C3. We have C0, right? So going back, we have C0 at this point. Okay, so how do we improve on that? So uh, one way to get rid of a sharp corner is by rounding it off. You can round it off with the fillet. Okay, so 
let's round off that corner. We're trying to avoid that corner. So just like on freeways, right, or autobahns, you don't want an exit to have a sharp turn, so you tend to round it off, right? That's why freeways, when you're getting off the, off the freeway, off-ramp, or on the on-ramp, right, getting on, tends to round off, right? So it's a smooth transition. Okay, so... Let's go to freeways, right? If you look at the images of a freeway, see how there's smooth transitions. Here's a good one right here, right? So as you're transitioning from, if you're transitioning on or off the freeway or going from one freeway to another, right? You want the smooth Continuous curvatures, right? You don't want sharp corners. You don't want somebody going 80 miles per hour and making a sharp corner. You want to round it off, right? And again, we have off ramps, on ramps, nice smooth transition. Curvature continuity, right? You avoid having sharp corners. All right, so same idea. Okay, so let's round off that sharp corner. And we can do it by adding tangency. Okay, so we can make the green line and the blue line tangent. So that's an option. We can make a tangent. What I'm going to do instead of what we see here is I'm going to put a fillet. I'm going to round it off. Fillets are very common in, uh, in manufacturing, aerospace, automotive, sheet metal, right? So I'm not going to duplicate exactly what's here. But let's go ahead and... Uh, Talk about tangency. So tangency is you transition from one surface to another. And a good example are creating fillets. Okay, so let's do some tangency here. But I'm going to do it with a fillet. So I'm going to round it off. Okay, let me look for fillet here. If I can find it. I don't see fillet, so let's go the long way. Oh, here it is. I need to res reset my toolbars. Right click, customize, and I'm going to go to toolbars and restore position to default. Okay, and close. Okay, there it is. Okay, so everything's restored. I don't need these filters right now, so I'll turn off these filters. Okay, don't ever uh, turn off your sketch tools. If you do, right, it's like, oh, what happened to my sketch tools? Just right click on any icon and turn on your sketch tools. It's very common for beginners to uh, accidentally turn off your sketch tools toolbar and then you start panicking because you can't find it. Just simply right click on any icon. Whoop, what did I do? Right click. I'm misclicking. I think it's because I'm using a cordless mouse. I'll just leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> My computer's not liking this. All right, so let's go to fillet. <laughs> fillet. So I'm going to do a round fillet from this surface, or this curve, I should say, to this curve. Okay, and I'm just going to guesstimate the size and click. And there it is. So here we have a radius, right? It's a smoother transition, as you can see. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the radius. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so as we transition from the blue spline into our radius or fillet, it's a lot smoother than having that sharp corner, right? So here you can see we have the tangency constraint, tangency constraint. So this is a lot smoother. But it's not quite perfect. It's not as smooth as maybe we should have it. All right, so. But let's go ahead and uh, explain tangent continuity. Okay, so once again, tangent. So you have two curves. In our case, we have a fillet where you transition from one to the other. And they only touch or intersect at one point. 
just like a wheel to the street, right? To the pavement, right? It only makes contact. So if you're riding on a skateboard, the wheel is only making contact at one point. So that is tangency. Okay, so it's a nice smooth transition, tangency. So here we have C1. Okay, so here we still have, we have C3. And then at this point, it drops down to C1. Same thing here. Now the arc or the fillet is C3, curvature continuous. But as we transition from the arc to the green spline, it's C1. So it's not a smooth transition still. It's a lot better than the sharp corner, right? Okay, so it's a lot smoother. So as you're traveling going 100 miles per hour, it's like, whoa, here comes an arc. You want to slow down, right? You need to slow down so you can uh, transition from one curve to another. Okay, so this is tangent continuity. And we also have a uh, point continu continuity. So we have a combination of C0 and C1 point continuity and their tangent. Okay, so how do we improve on this? How do we improve on this curvature? Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, one way to improve on it is by not only making this point continu uh, point continuous, C0, and C1 tangent continuity, right? Transitions from one to the other, but making the radius equal. Like, what does that mean, making the radius equal? Well, as you're traveling, uh, traveling along, the radius here is a lot larger as you start tightening the curve. So the radius here is a lot smaller. So I'm just going to make up some numbers. Let's say we're going here at 100 radius, this curve, and it's dropping down to 90, 80, 70. And let's say by the point we get here, the radius is around 50, right? So if the radius around this area is 50 on this curve, now the radius here on this side as we jump from one curve to the other, it's also 50. So that's what we're talking about when we bring up equal radii. So the radius as you, as you exit this curve, let's say it's 50, equals the radius on this curve, also 50. Okay, so now we have C2, curvature continuity. Okay, so if we go back, how do we uh, show that in wireframe? Okay, right now, the radius here doesn't equal the radius here. See how the radius here is around 20? Here it's probably around 60. So here we're going from 60 miles per hour to all of a sudden 20. My mistake, 60 uh, for uh, radius and all of a sudden we jump to 20, right? So you are going to feel that transition as you're driving. All of a sudden you need to slow down. It's like when you uh, fall asleep in the car and uh, the driver slows down to exit. You, you'll feel the change in speed or you'll feel your body drift to the side as you're exiting, right? And it'll wake you up. What? What would happen? Oh, we're exiting. Yeah, you, you feel the transition from going 65 miles per hour to all of a sudden dropping down to 40 and making that turn. Okay, so it's still not quite perfect. So let's increase it to C2. So right now we have C1 tangent continuity and C0 point continuity. So how do we improve on that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some points and I'm going to go a little bit further back from the tangent point. Okay, so I'm going to put a point there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and anchor that point. So I have a point here. And let's see if I can increase the size of it so we can see it a lot clearer. Okay, so here we have a point. And I'm going to add another point here. So it's very common when you're working in automotive. When you want to get that smooth transition on the surface of, let's say, the hood or on the car seat interior, right? Or the interior of a vehicle. Interior components such as dashboard, center console, and so on. So let's put another point. 
and you want to go further out from the tangent point and I'm going to go ahead and anchor that point point. and let me take that point and change the color I'm trying to make it yellow but I think it's blending in with the other colors okay so to improve on this transition from one curve to another and to another instead of using an arc a constant radius we're going to use something different okay so we're going to go over to we can either go to a, a spline that's one option we can go with connect curve Okay, so either one will work. Let's go to connect curve, similar to the connect curve that we use for wireframe tutorials. So I'm going to connect this element to this element. Oh, in this case, I didn't actually need the points. Okay, so uh, I wanted to uh, start at this point, but I didn't have that option to pick a different point, but that's okay. So let's ignore the points, but just so you're aware of, in automotive, you always want to go back, maybe like 20% back, and start the transition from back here. Okay, but that's okay. So I want you to notice that the connect curve, it bows out slightly more. Oh, actually, here are the points. Let's go back. Let me see if I can pick a different point thought it wasn't allowing me to no there it is so I'm gonna go back so let me fix that okay so point so there it is okay so it did allow me to go back and pick other points other than the tangent points all right so if I was working again in automotive and I wanted to improve on this corner make it transition a lot better I would go back about 20% on each side so you have this length right from the intersection point to the tangent point, and then you increase it by maybe about 20%. Same thing here, you have this length, and go beyond 20%, and pick that point. Okay, so we have those two points, and then we're gonna play with the tension. Okay, so we're gonna play with the tension. I'm gonna increase the tension. Uh, let me go to 1.5, and then go to the other side, increase the tension on that one. Okay, I want to make sure that the arrows are going in the right direction. Notice that we have a reverse direction and we have these red arrows, so we can flip. Okay, we don't want to go in that direction. That one's fine. Let's go to the other one. Flip. Okay, so they are going in the right direction. Sometimes you have to really zoom in to tell uh, if, you're, if it's not bending on you and there's an inflection point. Okay, so there it is. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. Now, uh, typically when it comes to tension, depending on who you work with, uh, ask your supervisor what type of tension do you typically want to use. And it can be anywhere, anywhere from 0 0.8 to maybe up to 2 in tension. If you go way beyond a tension of 2, you know, like let's say 10, you know, it's going to get really sharp or it's going to start going all over the place. If I try to increase it to 10, see what happens. Maybe you do want something like that, right? But typically a number below 2 will work. If we drop down to 0 0.8 or way below 0 0.8, see how it kind of starts flattening and it's not a good looking curve. But sometimes you do need to go below 0 0.8 or above uh, tension of 2. Okay, so let me just go up to, uh, you know, let me go up to 1.5 for both of them, see what we get. Okay, and you play with it and there it is 1.5 okay all right so I'm gonna hit okay okay so notice how it's a smoother transition let me change the color of um, my connect curve just so we can uh, separate it from the arc and I'll make this one uh, magenta all right, so see the difference? 
it's a smoother transition as you go from the blue spline to the magenta connect curve that we created. So this is almost conic in shape like a hyperbola. Then it transitions over to the green. Right, so it's a lot cleaner than the arc. The cool thing about this connect curve, as you transition from one to the other, it's hard to tell where the transition starts. See how it's so smooth? As you go from this curve to this one, let me turn off the, I'm just gonna hide the arc. See, it's a smoother, cleaner transition. We know it starts here because visually we placed a point there, right? But if that point wasn't there, let's see if I can hide this point. Yep, hide it. And I'm gonna hide some of the constraints just to show you how clean it looks. So I'm just gonna right click hide. See how it's difficult to tell where the magenta curve starts? It's a nice smooth transition. So now we've accomplished C2, right? Curvature continuity. It's a lot cleaner. The radius as you exit the blue spline equals the radius of the magenta curve. Same thing on the other end. If the radius here, let's say, is uh, 100, and it also equals the radius here at 100, and then you can increase your speed, right? You can go radius 200, 300 if you have a supercar, right? Okay, so this is what's referred to as curvature continuity, and you're going to hear the term accelerate, decelerate, when going from one to the other, transitioning, okay? So this looks a lot cleaner, and this is what we're looking for. Nice, clean transition. Okay, so not only do we have a connection, we have tangency and the radii are equal to each other. And how can you improve on that? Can you improve on that some more? Yes, you can. Okay, so you can improve on it even further by not only having a connection, right? Point continuity, C0. C1, tangent continuity. C2, the radius as you exit equals the radius as you enter the next curve. Now there's equal rates, meaning as you accelerate or decelerate, it's going to equal the same acceleration on the other curve. So in other words, as the radius is dropping, so if we're going from 100 to 70 to 80 to 50, right, we're decelerating. So if this equals 50 on radius for our radius, and as we exit, this also equals 50. And the rate of change as you go from one curve to the other are equal. So not only are the curves, not only do they have equal radii, the deceleration as you go from 100 to 80 to 60 to 50, and it continues on to the next one, 50, 40, and so on, the de rate of deceleration is equal. Or it can also be accelerating, right? So either, either or is acceptable. So we have equal radii and also the acceleration or deceleration are equal. So it's a smoother transition. It's hard to tell that these are two separate curves because it's so smooth as you transition over. And there's also C4 and, and on, but we're not going to cover those. We're going to go up to C3. That's typically good enough. Right, so we want nice... Curvature continuity says you transition from one curve to another, just like on the freeway, just like on an on-ramp or transition ramp, right? From one freeway to another, same idea. All right, so let's go back. So we covered the different types of curvature continuity from C0 all the way up to C3. And just a reminder, when dealing with surfaces, we'll be calling them G0. G1, G2, G3, and that will be covered in the surfacing tutorials. All right, so this is the end of this video.